well, it may seem like we have just turned up and had this beautiful 17 and a half pounder um, from the new embryo lake at Whittlesea, but it's taken all day to get this bite. Uh, me and Will turned up at first light, looked at either ends of the lake. Um, no swims on here at the moment, so Richard Holden, who works for Embryo, has been cutting out reeds for us just so we can fish. Obviously, that will all get done properly before it opens. This is where Rich Holden saw him over the weekend while he was clearing the reeds. They started to show, and Will seen a few sort of out long of my area, uh, you know, literally in the last sort of 10, 15 minutes. Even though these fish have only been stopped in here probably two months ago, something like that. This is a, a VSC5, um, and it's about the right weight for that. This is one of the smallest ones in here. There's 120 20s in here, up to 32 pound, and there's 50 of these guys, these C5s, which are 15 to sort of nearly 20 pound. And you see he's dark and right up already. Um, the water here is lovely and clear. A little bit weedy out there, so we're fishing pop-ups on every rod. Um, and this is a great start, as you can see, it's getting dark. It's, uh, it's going to be cold tonight, um, but uh, a very, very good start. Another one of that same year class, one of uh, Viv and Simon's C5s. This one came in the middle of the night, proper led me a merry dance. Looks like a male to me, so I think we'll call him Mr. Angry. And um, clearing the reeds out of the way meant I could put the rod tips down and I could back lead. So I'm putting little quarter of an ounce back leads on. I've got fluorocarbon on as well, the 15 pound contour, which sinks like a brick anyway, but these back leads basically just keep the line out of the way of the other fish when I'm playing them. You know, and this one was going left and right in front of the swim, over the top of the other lines, and I never had any problems at all. So with there being just low lime weed out there, there's no massive weed beds at the moment because it is January, keeping everything pinned to the deck. It also means I can fish really tight lines, and I think tight lines with helicopter rigs are definitely better at hooking the fish than slack lines. So, uh, you know, a nice little combination of tactics, and it is certainly working. Uh, that's yours, isn't it? Lovely. Right, good news is they ain't up the other end. All the bait's still there. Coots are diving on it. Yeah. I've been around the whole bit, you can see the bottom everywhere. Yeah. I didn't look on the spot that I baited for you against the reeds because there was no point because the spot that had been baited by Rich and me before that was clear, it's got all that corn, everything I put out yesterday is there. And the close in spot in the channel is worse. Every single drop of it's there, and what Rich put in on Saturday right. is still there. So yeah. that means they're at it, they've got to be up here. Yeah, 100%. So I think, it, what is it, quarter past two, I think the best would be donning the waders in about half an hour because I think, you know, it's going to go. Uh, it's going to be that time showing. again. It's going to be that time again, yeah. 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 And it's uh, exactly like last night, isn't it, now? The wind's pushing over. Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking great, isn't it? It's looking great on my side. It's looking great for you. <laughs> First one from last night, and uh, it took quite a long time to get a bite. They started showing again, similar sort of time. Half past three, four o'clock, we started to see them over by the reeds, but they were quite a bit behind where I was fishing. And I think if I'd been up tighter to the reeds yesterday afternoon, I might have got a bite earlier, but this one sort of came early evening. Uh, 15 and a half pound he goes, another one of uh, Simon Scott's finest. Imagine this when it's 30 pounds, and it won't be long before it is. Um, and this one was crapping out the bait. I'm using Mainline's winterized boilie called Fibre, um, which is going to be out next winter. And I've been developing that with them for the last two or three winters, and it is a fantastic bait. If you're going to come here at this time of the year, you want to be using something like that. So the cell, essential cell, um, any of them baits that really fly through the fish in the winter time, 
that's what you want to have on. You don't want to be fishing with fish mills and high oil pellets. They just studs the fish up, they go dormant and that makes them uncatchable. So what we feed them in the winter is absolutely key. Um, and then later on in the night, I've got one of the 20s. So uh, we're going to slip this one back and um, finish off with an absolute beast. Look at that, 27 and a half pound this one. Absolute brute of a fish, came on a middle rod in the middle of the night. No more bait went out there at all. I just moved it out a rod length further and uh, this is the result. Awesome, awesome creature. Um, and really, really chuffed to get it. I'm sure this will be a 30 pounder, you know, prior to spawning or certainly this coming autumn. Um, and there'll be loads in here this sort of size and bigger. So that's what we came here for. You know, the other ones I've caught are the smallest ones that are in here. And uh, they're very welcome. You know, it's been bitterly cold at times. The weather's not been banging for, for winter at all. Um, but put them in the right spot. Them little isotonics are working hard for us uh, and we are getting them. So uh, yeah, well chuffed with this one. We've got one afternoon left. I'm gonna go out a little bit longer, closer to the reeds where I saw the fish showing. Will's already gone out longer and put a couple of naked chods out there. Um, to see if he can snare one, but the fish are really balled up at the moment, it appears to be. And, uh, you know, we're going to give it till dark, see what happens, you never know, we might get another one. Just going to put a fresh bait on. The first tip I can give is to get all this done before bite time. So it's the middle of the day now, nothing's happened in the mornings, and uh, the fish start showing about half past three, four o'clock. So I want to get all three rods back out there again. Um, basically well before that so what I'm uh, what I'm doing I've just cut a little flat on the bottom of a 12 mil pop-up these are little YB pop-ups I've had made uh, special um, you can actually get these up at Norton Disney uh, the embryo day ticket complex um, mainline have been kind enough to make these for us um, to sell at Norton Disney I use them in my fishing a lot they're just IB pop-ups exactly the same as the standard IBs um, that you get in the shops but just made a little bit smaller but they're not quite buoyant enough over a long period of time to um, to hold up this size 4 curve um, straight off the bottom so I've just cut a little flat on the bottom a little bit of yellow rig foam underneath it to neaten it up probably doesn't matter what colour the foam is but um, that just gives it that extra little bit of buoyancy just burn the top of it down onto there just push that down and the rig basically is something that I can cast onto that silk weed out there and know it's still presenting. And that is the most important thing when it's weedy, is can the fish get the bait in their mouth? There's no point putting out a bottom bait rig, you know, on, on like a lead clip or something. It goes into six inches of silk weed. It's all snarled up. The fish can't get the bait in their mouth. You're not going to catch them. You know, the freebies I've been putting out, they are getting them. Even though they're going onto the weed, we've seen there's been fibre in the sling in the morning where the fish are passing the bait. So I'm putting them out. They're sitting in the top layer of the weed and the fish are managing to suck them out of the weed but attached to a hook a bottom bait probably wouldn't move so uh, just want a little pop up just with the hook standing bolt upright off the bottom and then fished on a helicopter rig you know I can use a short hook link a cast out it flies up hits the top no trace bead the lead plummets into the silk weed the hook link is sitting on top and it just finds its place on top of the weed I've got about two foot of lead core don't use much lead core at all um, just enough basically um, and that bead I can slide up and down depending on how deep the weed is. I'm fishing a heli safe so I'm dumping the lead as well. First couple of fish I caught didn't really do a lot and the lead stayed on and I didn't lose the fish so that was absolutely fine but you know if you are fishing for big ones and it's weedy you know really want to have a heli safe on so you can dump the lead. And the hook link is 25 pound boom I guess that's about four or five inches long just basically got a loop at one end which I've put onto a size 11 quick change ring swivel and just covered that up with a four mil bead so I can loop the hook link off and put a different length on without having to cut the lead core off and then at the other end I've got another crimped loop I've got me a little bit of dark matter putty around that and you can see that's stripped right back there's not a lot going on there at all you know and uh, I think that gets you more bites the more balanced everything is you know the less going on the more effective it is. And a size four curve, not sharpening them or anything else. The join between the spinner swivel and the hook is just covered up with a medium size kicker, little tiny hook bead up the top there. And I want that bait 
sort of coming off roughly opposite where the barb would be. I've made this one barbless, just crimped it down flat. That's absolutely fine on here, but you do need to use barbless hooks. You know, we're gonna have a big turnover of anglers here. We can't legislate for people not fishing properly. So if you've got a barbless hook on, it's that little bit safer for the fish. So, you know, if one is lost in the weed and it's trading a load of line, there's more chance of it getting off a barbless hook and not being tethered. And that's the reason that we have a barbless rule in these sort of places, you know, we're thinking about the fish. Um, so if you're going to fish over this sort of silkweed on any venue, that is what I recommend. Well, that just basically went in my hand. <laughs> just redid it. And didn't even get the bobbin on. <laughs> oh shh, got him. Oh, the last 20. Put it back out, 17 rod lengths. There's two fishing slings down there, and it has just gone again. Literally within five minutes of being out there. Is that over your lines, Will? Yeah, but my lines are pinned down, mate. It's over the top of them, though. Yeah, you're, you've come past me. You're going, yeah, past my swim, yeah. Right, OK, all right. I'll, I'll net it the other side of you. Go and dip the net. Is he in? Yes, he is in. What a palaver. Yeah, man, check that out. 27 pounds, 12 ounces, the biggest one of the session for me. And it's mad, eh? just going out that little bit further has changed the action completely. Loads of daytime bites, and um, it's almost going off in my hand each time. But we've run out of time in this session, and uh, this shows you what you can do at Whittlesea if you get it right. It's a perfect place for coming on a social with your mates. We've had loads of giggles. Um, you know, we've drunk too much wine, we've had too much food, and that's what it's all about, and catching a few of these guys at the same time. So uh, if you're interested in doing a social session with your mates for three, four, or seven days, um, then get on the website, get all the details of how to book it, and come down and enjoy some of this action, because uh, you've got to remember, it's January. I know these fish haven't been caught before, but it's been freezing cold at times. It is January and they are still having it.